Thank you so much for coming here today to hear more about the conservation of the world's endangered species. It's a great honor to be here to introduce Tai Van Nguyen of Save Vietnam's Wildlife. Uh, he's been working tirelessly for the last 10 years to conserve the critically uh, endangered pangolin. Today, it's the most uh, illegally traded mammal in the world, so really facing some huge conservation threats. And Tai has always been passionate about wildlife. He grew up in the forests of Vietnam, and he was always concerned about the poaching that was happening for traditional medicine and for, for bushmeat. And he was always very motivated to get involved in conservation. And his pivotal moment happened when he was eight years old and he witnessed poachers in the forest and they were taking a, pang a mother pangolin and her crying baby from the forest. And the cries of that baby pangolin stayed in his heart and he realized that he wanted to commit his life to the conservation of Vietnam's wildlife. He went on to study wildlife biology and conservation at the Durrell Institute at the University of Kent. And he returned to Vietnam to set up the first rehab, rehabilitation center and care center for, for these threatened pangolins and other Vietnam wildlife. And went on to start the NGO Save Vietnam's Wildlife. And yeah, I mean, he, they are one of the few voices in Vietnam today um, cons working to conserve uh, the beautiful species that Vietnam has. And we're going to start off with a video to demonstrate the work that they do, and then Ty will come on and tell you more detail about their fantastic conservation activities. The shy, secretive pangolin is the world's only warm-blooded animal covered in scales. To protect themselves, pangolins roll into a tight ball effective against all predators except people. Each year, Hundreds of live pangolins are confiscated from the illegal wildlife trade in Vietnam. The wildlife trade is a brutal industry. Animals can go weeks without access to food or water and are often suffering from serious wounds from snares and traps. In wildlife markets, pangolins are sold by weight and so hunters will often force feed limestone slurry or inject water beneath the animal's skin to increase profits. Rescued pangolins are almost always weak, dehydrated, and starving. The pangolins' rehabilitation and long journey home begin with expert care. To feed the animals, live ants must be collected. Long-term cases are eventually transitioned onto frozen ants and ground silkworm larvae. Pangolins are one of the most difficult species to manage in captivity. Uh, they need specialised diet, well-designed housing, quality veterinary care, and all of this has to happen in a minimal stress environment. When pangolins come into our quarantine centre, our staff work incredibly hard. Even just searching for ants in the forest can take hours. A rescue of 70 animals requires around 21 kilos of live ants and our only alternative to that is buying frozen farmed ants which can cost upwards of US $4,700 a month. Pangolins requiring long-term care are housed in large naturalistic enclosures mimicking their habitat in the wild. Our goal when rescuing any pangolin is to rehabilitate and return them to the wild. Animals are deemed suitable for release if they are fit, healthy and free of disease. Save Vietnam's Wildlife uses radio transmitters to track pangolins released into the forest and collects data on the release process. Release sites are chosen after careful habitat assessment involving camera trapping and walking spotlight transects. This helps to ensure released animals survive and support wild pangolin populations. 
These sites are often far away from Save Vietnam's Wildlife's Rehabilitation Center, often meaning journeys of thousands of kilometers to release animals safely. Releases always occur at night time to give the pangolins, nocturnal creatures, the best start possible. Our team's work doesn't stop after the release, as our field team continues to monitor the animals via radio tracking and camera traps at burrow entrances. The rescue rehabilitation and release of pangolin is a vital component to saving this critically endangered species. However, to have a real resource, we need to engage a multi-faceted strategy. Save Vietnam's Wildlife works with the Vietnamese government to improve law enforcement to combat illegal wildlife trading and improve habitat protection. We conduct social surveys to understand the motivations of pangolin consumers and target groups so we can create effective demand reduction campaigns. Save Vietnam's Wildlife also educates the public, raising awareness and reducing demand for pangolin products. The public is also encouraged to participate in our conservation activities and wildlife education programs. many people of us didn't know what is a pangolin. So, uh, and also with, I've been start with the pangolin conservation like 10 years. When I st first start with the pangolin, we know it's pangolin decline. And today I'm here with you, but sadly still the pangolin population of still decline. And that is, so today I, we show you what is the problem and and some of the, our activity to do and what we need to do to save this uh, critically and in the species. So that is me in 2006, so when is I first meet the pangolin. So, so it's when I start with the pangolin, we the first start the rescue rehabilitation center in the Southeast Asia. And at that time, look at all of the paper, look at everything we have. We don't know how to feed for pangolin. We don't know how to care for pangolin. We don't know what is the how for pangolin look like. A lot of zoo in US, a lot of zoo in Europe, a lot of zoo over the world try to keep pangolin in captivity, but it's not success. So all of everything is we start. It's everything is we learn. I like, spend most of my time is in in the in the night like l watching the animals, seeing animals, what they are doing, learn from day by day, learn from all of, every single individual, understand both the characteristics, it's the way it's we learn and we improve our work and we get better success today. So, m many of you is know, it's the pangolin, it may not hurt about that word, but the pangolin is often is called like scary and Easter here in America. And it's look, the pangolin is quite, so what is pangolin you have? You don't have a pangolin naturally distributed here in America, but you have an unmedido, it's quite similar. They also always have a very hard cover and it protects themselves. That is the how the pangolin is like. So many of us is don't know very much about pangolin, but there are eight pangolin species, four distributed in Asia, four in Africa. Lucky in Vietnam, we have a two pangolin species, one, one distributed in the north of Vietnam, like with the red, red dot, is called Chinese pangolin. And the, the second species is called Sanda pangolin, distributed in the south and the central Vietnam with the like, green dots here. So both, sadly, both pangolin is least in critical list and as a species in the IEC and red list. So let me tell you about the, like you already see the video and understand some about the pangolin. So pangolin don't have a teeth. 
they just have a very long sticky tongue to lick the ant. And so they also have a long claw and often dig on the ground, dig inside the tree hollows, and feeding on ant and termite inside the tree or underground. They have only one baby, they live in underground, and it's, that is very much so we know about the pangolin. We don't know exactly how, how long is ma like the, um, the mom is pregnant. We don't know exactly all of the understandable the pangolin in the wild. So, <laughs> so how they can defend themselves? Like by, by queue up into the bowl, the pangolin can avoid like again any of kind of powerful carnivore like lion, tiger, they can't eat them. So who can eat pangolin? So only when they are very young, whole body is like the scale is very soft. It's where it's a summer small carnival, they can come inside the ball, they can touch the baby. So that is only state is that they are made the dancer with the other mammal. So look here on the picture, the, the crab eating mongoose, they come inside the ball and the lucky for the baby, the mom stay inside. And two days later, the, the mom is decide, I'm worried for my baby, and I need to take maybe to a different place. So that is the how mom care for the baby. And the mom is often carry on the tail, it's going outside feeding, and come inside the ball. When the mom is very, uh, when the baby is very small, mom often like feeding close to the ball. It's sadly, that is the way it's hunter often hunt pangolin as well. So they see a lot of the digging ball feeding around the ball. So that is the way they, they know that there are mom there and they cut the mom with and baby. So who is bring the problem with the pangolin? It's a human. So look at the picture here. It's a one hunter. He have everything to hunt animal everything to hunt the pangolin. He have a hunting dog, he have a snare trap, he have a spotlight thing. He have everything to go to the forest to hunt pangolin. But it's not hunting is not the problem from beginning to driving the pangolin to extinction. Hunting been happened for a very long time. People eating pangolin for many years. People using pangolin for the traditional medicine for many, many years. But that in the last 20, 25 years, that is the pangolin is more become rare and rare, and now it's facing with extinction. Why is that? Because the increase of population, increase of economic, especially the country like Vietnam and China. So people destroy all the forests, people uh, for the agriculture development, for the construction, and also the problem of the habitat fragmentation. We may see like the pangolin is not move very far, but the problem is right now we see in Taiwan, a lot of the forest is very small and inbreeding is happen in many different places. So because of, it's nowhere for them to escape, like nowhere for them to move, and the population is very small, that is where it brings the problem. And of course, because of, when it's a habitat lot, they know nowhere to live, and the population gets smaller, hunting pressure put on the pangolin, that is driving pangolin to extinction. And that is uh, often they use the snare, they use the hunting dog, they use the, uh, as they go look, look for the side to hunt the pangolins. So why they hunt the pangolins? A lot of people in Asia, in Africa, they're using pangolin meat. They think it's like the, the taste is good and, and they keep using. The pangolin scale also been using in traditional medicine. Many um, like ton a ton of pangolin scale been using like in the hospital. In the last ten years, ninety ton of pangolin scale uh, and the meat have been confiscated in Vietnam. In China, in the last five years, one hundred and thirty four ton of pangolin scale been like. Uh, legally it's used in the hospital. So the with the scale, they only made from 10 body weights. So over a 
thousand tons of pangolins been removed from the wild to cope with the, the demand. So not only scale, the whole pangolin also put in the wild wild bottle and for people to drink the wild wild. And the problem is come from for many, many years. And in Vietnam, the country like Vietnam, the pangolin scale, the value of pangolin scale or rhino horn for or many other wildlife plants, they've been listed in the book, which is like guide for all the citizen and medicine doctor. So, <coughs> so it's the problem before 1990, most of the pangolin is being hunt for the local consumption. And people that hunt to eat, and to use the pangolin scale locally. But from 1990, Vietnam is more open when the economy is open. A lot of rich people in the city, Vietnam is open trading with China. It's where it starts all of the problem. And a lot of, lot of the pangolin now is from the many countries in Southeast Asia go to, through Vietnam, consuming Vietnam also is going to China. And sadly now, more and more pangolin, because the pangolin in Asia is getting much rare. And it's a lot of the hunter, a lot of traders start going to Africa to hunt the pangolin from the Africa. So that is all of the problem with pangolin face. And so Save Vietnam Wildlife is a non-profit organization in Vietnam and we try to fight to save this species. What we are doing? The first is we work with Vietnamese government to to change the law, to improve law enforcement. So let me tell you about the story about the, one of the, our animals named Lucky. So Lucky, so it is me with the Lucky, that in 2006. So Lucky been confiscated together with 67 pangolin. And at that time, only five pangolin been like sending to the our center. When I checked five pangolin, Sadly, one of them already dead. I asked the government officer, can I change to the alive pangolin? He said, yes, of course, but you need to choose the smallest one. And I picked up the lucky, and that's why it's the name lucky come from. He's lucky because as a hit friend, he's not been so white to the chest. He's lucky because he has in the out center. He's been lucky with the look after by the like, people who really care to save the pangolin. But sadly, it's many other pangolin being so back to the chest. So why? Because the government officer is allowed to sell the pangolin back to the chest. That is the problem. And we try to work with Vietnamese government to change. So since 2014, the law changed. Pangolin moved up to the priority species for the conservation. And it's like no. No more legally uh, selling confiscated pangolin back to the chest. So that is really good step up to save pangolin. And it's good thing is more pangolin come to the rescue center now. But it's the big problem so, but it's small problem come. So in our center right now, we hold 70 pangolin. And you see on the video how hard we look after for pangolin. But the government officer said, we can't delete pangolin until the illegal case closed because it's the evidence from the case. So what happened with if we, you are delete pangolin and then someone say, yeah, I, I saw evidence, I own the pangolin. How can you bring the pangolin back? Yeah, that's the problem with the law. And right now we've been like working very hard to solve the problem. And also we're working a lot with media and try to get the public opinion to show the government it's the wrong thing, it's the wrong law, and we need to change the law. One of the, our biggest success is last year is when we're working with Vietnamese government. Is, so last year, the Ministry of Health, they organized uh, the workshop, and they discussed what kind of ingredient, what kind of things the, the, male, uh, the health insurance should be covered. Before that, the pangolin is lit but it's paid by the health insurance. And we are there and we say, it's, you can't like, support for pangolin. You can't like, pay for the pangolin scale because it's nowhere they can buy the pangolin scale. It's like pangolin is protected by the law. It's really bad for Vietnamese government to pay for something illegal. And it finally we get the, the agree to move pangolin scale out of the list.
So what does that mean to us? Look at the China. Every year now, the Chinese government still allow for the hospital to use around 26 tons of pangolin scale in the hospital. And it's a good step for Vietnam is we're not allowed to use any pangolin scale in the hospital. So I move to the next one is when we're working a lot of the, our focus is uh, try to save the pangolin. We don't know how many pangolin are there in the wild. We know a lot of pangolin been hunt illegal trading to the city, to the China. So that, I'm not sure you see clearly, that is uh, how pangolin been kept, how pangolin been kept, the, like for one, two weeks with the condition like this. It's really, really bad. Most of animal very weak, no access to water or food. Lot of them is have a problem. It nearly 40% of pangolin come to our center with the problem of the health. They have a problem of the wound around the, the legs. They have a problem of the wound because from snare trap around the legs. A lot of the problem is the, the wound is coming from the long time in the church at wall. So a lot of people said rescue animal is not your job. The rescue animal, it should be respond by government. So look at the picture, what is the government do? So they list, they list the pangolin territory in the wild. They have their own home. And if we put too many pangolin together, it brings a lot of stress to the wild population. And that is how they keep, they list a lot of the pangolin in one place. They list like together with snake, with many other species as well. And a lot of pangolin distribute in the south of Vietnam, but they live in the north of Vietnam. It's the wrong habitat. So that's why we have to do, you know, that's why we have to rescue the pangolin. And so 2006, we are the first organization to open the rescue center in Vietnam. And the right now, still a lot of the country around the Southeast Asia still struggle how to look after, how to keep the pangolin. And so it's really a good step for us to learn how to look after for the pangolin and the return pangolin back to the wild. So this year, the four months ago, we released 35 pangolin back to the forest, and now we have a 70 pangolin that waiting to be released back to the wild. So we not just stop up like only working at the rescue animal. We need to learn animals from the wild. We need to manage the wild population. That's why we have a few team carry the field work in the wild. We need to uh, we do the habitat assessment we, to know is that pangolin there. We also is understand the population and try to learn more about ecology. So how for like help us to manage the wild population more effectively. We also carry the. The radio tracking, we try to understand is how peng when we return any pangolin back to the wild, are they doing well, are they adapt well with the natural environment. And we also want to learn is uh, like how large is the home range. So in the next future, if we recommend for other organization or outside organization, how far we should release one pangolin from each other. That is all of the study we need to, need to do. And that is the radio chucking project is we working on. So lucky for me, we have a land here, the, our uh, wildlife education manager. So not only working with government, not only working to say whatever we have pangolin now, if we are not educate people, we, if we are, people keep using the pangolin, they keep eating pangolin, it's a problem, it's never end up. So we create the education program. So first, we want to understand about the public. What is the public opinion? What is they understand about the pangolin? What do they think about the law? What do they recommend us to do to save the pangolin? So we carry research. The last year, we're training for 114 volunteers who is carry now. They already interview. 8,000 people across Vietnam and try to understand about the more characteristic and understand more like the, like who is should be targets in the future. If we want to reduce the demand, if we want to save the pangolin, what should we do? 
we not only interview them, we talk with them at the beginning, at the end of the interview. We give them the certificate with the information of the pangolin. We educate people. With that 8,000 people already get the certificate, already understand like, or they, like what is the problem with the pangolin and who eats the pangolin. We try to say with them, you shouldn't eat that pangolin anymore. We, we also doing the training course. We working a uh, training course for government to improve law enforcement. We also publish the book like to educate people. It's, if you are in, in um, America, you can find the book for the children. It's Roly Poly Pangolin. It's, that, is a, yeah, that is a very nice children book. At, it's really good information for the kids to understand what is a pangolin. We also like building awareness inside the forest to let people understand more about the animal. They should proud about the what species they have over there. And then that is the, that is the, all of the, they should do the action to save the animal. So the one story here is the people start changing. The man here, he's the driver. He, because he's concerned about the pangolin, when he saw the pangolin run across the road near a lot of the local people's house, he cut the pangolin. His salary is only $200 per month. And to sell this pangolin, it's like he has like five months salary. He don't need to drive the car. He don't need to drive the truck for five months. But he didn't do that. He worked very hard to try to coerce, try to find like who is support pangolin, who is doing the work pangolin. They, he called me, he said, I, I don't trust government officer. I don't want to bring my pangolin to them. I want someone to help me to delist that animal back to the forest. And then, and then we come to see the people and connect with the government and delist that animal. We see the happiness from him to see the animal to return the wild. So what is the future for the pangolin? Easy for us to say, we find the problem. The problem is people eating pangolin. We stop them eating. People using pangolin for medicine. We ban it. Or if the government officer corrupt, not working, they, they quit. Easy for us to say that, but the problem is not that simple. Because the pangolin's been ill for a long time, because scale been ill for a long time, it's kind of the culture, and it's very hard to break, very hard to change. And it takes time, it takes time for us. But we are not much men in pangolin there, and we need to work, we need to, to work together to fight for the animal. So the one of the action here, how can we work together? That's the education center is starting build. That is the how the design inside, and we try to educate people. So where the kids can come, can play, can understand about the animal. And the, in the future, they will not eat the animal. And if they see the problem, they will talk to their parents, they talk to their grandparents, don't eat, don't consume the animal. So the education center is needs your support. And you, need, you also can, like, Raise your voice to help other people about the problem of the pangolin. You talk, tell other people in the world know about the pangolin. That is the way we less more publicity, the way we can force the government to, to improve the work and the way we can save the animal. And we need to give a brighter future for, the, for the, our next generation, like the pangolin and for the, our kids. And that is uh, what say Vietnam Wildlife been doing and what is we try to achieve. Thank you very much. <laughs>